Yo, Ryan O, Behavior Analyst and Creator. All things Behavior Analysis is what you'll find on this channel. We like to nerd out on psychology here. And today, in just two minutes, the functions of behavior explained. All right, so in behavior analysis, behavior is everything we do as a living organism. We learn through various environmental interactions that we incur. And surprisingly, that can explain why we do what we do in every aspect of the world, from talking, thinking, dreaming, loving, working, etc. Everything that you do as a member of the human species is influenced in part by your interaction with the environment. But for all of this behavior, there is one simple definition that helps guide or steer you towards finding out why a particular behavior that you engage in keeps occurring or doesn't. Said another way, you can take this definition and understand why your behavior is occurring and how to influence it. So what is it? Cooper, Heron, and Heward in 2020 describe a function-based definition as one that designates responses as members of the target response class solely in terms of their common effect on the environment. The effect that your behavior has on the environment, that's how we classify these things. So what this means is that you engage in behavior that produces a particular change in the environment. And every time you get that same thing from the environment, we would classify that into the same function. So for example, you order a beer at a bar, you buy one from the store, you ask your friend for one, or you simply get one out of the fridge yourself. While they all look entirely different, they provide the same effect on the environment, a cold beer in your hand ready for consumption. While this may not sound groundbreaking in much of the other social and hard scientific fields, they like categorizing behavior based on what it looks like, the topography of it, which we've known for the better part of a century now, that it may be useful for discussing some aspects of behavior, but it is an inferior approach to the function-based approaches like that the behavior analysis takes. If you wanna learn more about how our behavior is selected through different things like natural selection, the behavior within our lifetime through contingency reinforcement or through culture, I'm gonna link that video at the very end. Now, I wanna take another example, but first, this video is brought to you by patrons, people like you that support my efforts financially, for three years now, I've spent time and lost money, I actually lost money creating these videos because I think they're important, the field is important, and there are important people doing important things that need to be heard by people like you. So if it's something you're considering, even potentially checking out and supporting, down below, Patreon is the platform. There's a link there, values-based model. You can choose, there's different perks. I also have a lot of different continu continuing education classes as well at thebehavioracademy.com. So, Let's jump back in the video. Let's look at that other example. Now, a child is in a grocery store looking at candy. What are the available responses if they are trying to obtain the candy? Well, it depends on the child's skill set, but let's offer some examples of what could maybe happen. They could perhaps reach for it and put it in the cart, maybe without you looking, or they could reach for it and make a noise signaling to the parent or guardian that it is a desired or wanted, or they could perhaps ask for it in some sort of communication modality if they've learned how to do that or they could resort to other things like whining for it or even screaming and tantruming for it. All of these, if they obtained the candy, would have the same function from a behavior analytic perspective. They are all candy obtaining behavior. Now, the best part is that you can use this definition to analyze any behavior that a living organism engages in, from single cell organisms all the way up to complex mammals like ourselves. That's right, in most ways, we aren't just that different from everything else in the world. We've been shown to learn through consequences, all right? And these consequences are defined through the effect on the environment. What that means is that every single thing that you do has a measurable effect on the environment or a function. And looking at the world through this lens will provide a clear understanding of why you do what you do, or maybe why you don't do what you don't do. And from there, it allows you to further analyze and learn how to influence it. Oftentimes requiring a professional, of course, right? Now, that doesn't mean that there are shortcomings of this approach though. The most common issue is people like to lump behavior into the four main functions of behavior, which I explain after this in another video. If you wanna check out the links down below a little bit more as to like some, some perhaps issues with categorizing things too much. I also offer a much better explanation of why we got on this path in the first place in order to avoid falling into the traps of these four functions of behavior. Hint, stick to the definition. So if you wanna learn more about this, check those out, but also see down below where I shared some of the links to various associations and books to learn more for free about this functional approach. I hope you learned something. Like, share, subscribe, it actually makes a difference. And if you can support me through Patreon or my continuing education courses, more of that is down below. That's your daily behavior.